Oh no, oh. no. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, there's some dissension on, on who got what word problems here. And so Michael is, Michael is totally nonplussed on his word problem. <laughs> Um, you were going to the Atlanta United soccer game, okay? So I just I just forgot to per, put that in there, but that's why you were going to Atlanta. It was for, to watch Atlanta United, so and they won, okay? In in the Mercedes Benz, whatever dome thing that's called, the, the place that has the soccer yes. field, yeah. All right. Anyway, <laughs> let's review some things before we take a look at your homework handouts. Um, we've been talking about motion, and in general, the study of motion is called. Mechanics. Now, along with that, I gave you a term kinematics. What's that, Audrey? Michael? Studying motion, but we don't care about the things that cause it. Right, the study of motion without regard to the causes it themselves. Uh, we talked about translational motion, Audrey. What is translational motion? No, but I spent all that. <laughs> Not that kind of translate, okay. Kendall? Michael? Motion on a line? Not necessarily. Motion that results in a change of position. Okay, so remember we said if I spin around, that's motion, but I didn't change my position. I may have changed my direction, if you will, but I didn't change my position. Um, change my mental state. Um, <laughs> And if I were to violently shake, okay, that's motion, but I didn't change my position. So those are examples of motion that don't result in change of position. Translational is I walk over here, so now I'm not on the camera when I shake violently. Okay. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, we talked about, now Michael, you said motion along a line. That is, I mean, translational motion could be along a line, because again, that would still result in change of position, but specifically what type of motion is along a straight line path? You got half of it. Rectilinear got motion. He forgot rect. <laughs> As opposed to he got rect. Right. Anyway. All right. <laughs> oh, dumb jokes, dumb jokes. This is rough, rough morning, rough morning. Tough crowd. All right. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so rectilinear motion along a straight line path. What if the path were a curved line path? For instance, um, a corner kick goal, right? You can't kick those along a straight line unless you get the flying header, I guess. But uh, if we, we hook it in, right, that would be along a curved path. Curvilinear. Curvilinear motion, good. Uh, we said that um, the distance an object travels in a certain amount of time class is called speed. Distance traveled per unit time is called speed. Speed is not concerned about direction, so we say speed because it has magnitude, but not direction is called a... Not a sector, you kind of combined two things. A scalar, a scalar. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming. We don't care about what direction we're going, so scaly fish just keep, I don't know, scalar, I don't know if that helps. I don't, I don't think it helps, maybe. She's like, swimming, no, scalar. <laughs> uh, so speed would be a scalar, and there are some other scalars we'll look at this year. Uh, we said contrast that then with speed in a particular direction, which we call, no. Mm -hmm. Speed in a particular direction. Michael? Well, the, 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 you're one step ahead of me. That was going to be my next question. Speed in a particular direction is called? Velocity. Velocity. Now, the next question is going to be, because velocity has direction and magnitude, oh yeah, it's called a vector. vector. There we go. Okay, so vectors have direction, scalars don't. Speed is a scalar, no direction. Velocity is a vector. Uh, it has direction. That works great for now. Speed is a scalar. Velocity is a vector. And then we get into all kinds of other vectors that don't start with V, so it doesn't really help later. But for now, it might help. Um, in order to account for direction, though, it is unlikely an object actually travels in a straight line at a constant speed. Very rarely. I mean, I suppose if the object were away from any outside forces, like in outer space, kick a soccer ball in outer space, and say bye-bye to the soccer ball. It just goes in a straight line at a constant speed, right? And uh, so in that case, you'd have a uniform velocity. The problem is that's not normal. Normally, there's some changing of direction throughout the flight or the path of some object. Um, usually, there's some variance in the actual speed element. So to break it all down, we say forget any twists and turns. 
This is where it started. This is where it ends up. All we care about is the straight line distance, first of all, which we call class displacement, that straight line distance, and now we have a direction. Because the direction is really changing probably throughout any journey or trip, but we take the curvature, for instance, out. If we were to kick the, 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 the you know, hook that kick from the corner um, into the goal, well, but point A to point B, where to start, where it ended up, that's actually what we'd be concerned with, right? Um, so that displacement allows us to define the direction. Sometimes we'll have problems that actually use north, south, east, west in direction. Other times, we'll simply say that the intended direction is positive, so anything that goes opposite that would be class negative. negative. Right, so positives and negatives can show direction, as can north, south, east, west. Um, we'll see a couple of problems here with that. Um, we said that uh, as velocity increases or decreases, as velocity changes, uh, we call that change in velocity per unit time. Kendall? You speed up, you slow down, your velocity is changing. Some cars, and then other, okay, so uh, they, speeding up, but in different amounts of time. So the time rate of change in velocity. It's the other name for the gas pedal. Acceleration. Accelerator, so the acceleration, okay, acceleration is uh, the change in velocity per unit time. And so if we take these, these ideas of uh, velocity, which is not distance per unit time, but rather that straight line distance class or displacement per unit time, that gives us what we call our average velocity, because we kind of average it all out. That, in a sense, is our first equation for this chapter, which was what, Audrey? Um, Good. V sub AV equals D over T. Average velocity is displacement per unit time. And then our equation for acceleration, Michael. Um, A equals V sub F minus V sub F over T. There we go. Now, obviously, if an object is speeding up, the final velocity is faster than the initial. So we get a positive change up here. If the initial velocity is faster, the object is slowing down with a slower final velocity, you're going to wind up with a negative change, which is going to give you a negative acceleration. What is that term for negative acceleration, Kendall? Deceleration. Deceleration. Also, with these two equations, we need to be able to manipulate them. If I wanted to get D by itself, class, I would simply multiply, multiply the T, right? If I want to get the T by itself, I'd have to alternate and then of course I divide. If I wanted to get the t by itself here, alternate. alternate and divide. If I wanted to get one of these variables by itself, I'd first have to multiply, multiply the t and then move around whatever needs to be moved around. So these are what we're going to memorize. We're not going to memorize all three forms of this or all four forms of this. We're just going to be able to work the uh, formulas around to get them the way we want them. For instance, let's take a look at the handout. So a trip from Columbus to Atlanta to go see Atlanta United, it, uh, that part's understood, is 108 miles along the usual roads. If it takes Michael 96 minutes for this trip, find his average speed. So to find speed, it's not really one of our formulas per se, but we have its definition, Michael, which is um, distance, over time. distance over time. Now normally, if we're finding speed here in the U.S., we would normally say speed is in what units class? Miles per hour. Well, here I've got miles, right? The distance is 108 miles, but the time is a rather awkward 96 minutes. What could I do with that 96 minutes? Um, I change it to 1.6 hours. Yeah, divide by 60, you'll get 1.6 hours. And then you can divide the 108 by 1 1.6 to get? Uh, 6 68 miles per hour. Comes out evenly? Yes. 68 miles per hour. You could also say miles per hour. Either of these ways to express it. How many got 68 miles per hour for the average speed? All right, did you leave it in miles per minute? You went to meters per second? All right, let's see what that would be here. Hold on there. Because um, uh, that's not wrong, I mean, it's more scientific. Now, technically, of course, 67.5, but we rounded to the, up to the 68. So if this is in uh, miles, uh, miles per hour, we have to multiply that by uh, an hour over 3,600 seconds and uh, one mile under 5,280 feet. 
And then uh, if you're going meters, then uh, 3.281 feet underneath the meter. Um, all right, so 67.5 times 5, 280. Uh, we divide that by 3,600 and divide that by 3.281. You could have had approximately 30 point meters per second. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, what do you have? I had miles per minute. You had miles per minute. Okay. Yeah, we don't, we don't, let's change, well, at least, I mean, I know she did extra work, but at least it's a unit we like, I mean, as opposed to miles per minute. Mm -hmm. let's, let's, let's not do that. Okay. All right, questions on this. All right, then it says, so that was his speed, but it says if Atlanta's 65 miles northeast of Columbus, find the average velocity of the trip. All right, average velocity is not distance over time, class, but displacement over time. And so the displacement, although he actually traveled 108 miles, the displacement he traveled class was only 65 miles. Now I'm going to roll with that same 1.6 hours. And what do we get for his average velocity now? Michael? 41 miles per hour. Good, around 40.625, but rounded 41 miles per hour. And we need to state the direction. Since it said northeast in the problem, I can state the direction and say 41 miles per hour northeast. If direction is not stated, we would allow positive to mean he was actually going to Atlanta like he wanted. What would be, by the way, a return trip to, to Columbus then? That would have been negative. So if, he traveled at the, if it took the exact same amount of time to get back, which is unlikely getting out of Atlanta um, <laughs> after a soccer game, but anyway, um, then it would be negative 41 or 41 miles per hour south west, right, um, as you go in the opposite direction. So a couple ways we could show that there. Questions on that first problem? All right, next problem. Uh, Kendall, read it for us while I erase the board. Evelyn's driving along a country road at 30 point mile, um, meters per second, and she sees a deer ahead. She slows down to avoid being seen. Exactly 1.5 seconds later, she is traveling to 19 and then she's it should say find her deceleration. Um, originally, I had a, a, a male student's name in here, and then you know we reworked it for Kendall mm -hmm. and uh, find her deceleration, not the deer's deceleration. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, so deceleration is the another name for acceleration. acceleration. It's just we know we're going to get a negative answer, right? So we're going to want to use our acceleration equation here, and uh, we need to start by plugging in the final velocity. What was the final velocity after you slowed down? 19 meters per second. 19 meters per second, and we're going to subtract away what you were traveling, 30 meters per second. which we know from the last problem is 68 miles per hour, okay? And uh, so appreciate that. Um, and your dad's like, she's no hunter of mine. She should have hit that deer. It's a meat. All right. <laughs> No, no, I'm sure he'd, ra he'd rather have that to, uh, to go hunting and get it the fun way, right? But I mean, hey, however you got to get it, right? Um, you saw the one about the guy who was driving down the road in his convertible and this half-crazed deer running across the road and times his leap just perfectly to land in the back of the convertible. And he happens to pull up, the game warden stops him, and he has a hard time explaining, I didn't actually shoot the deer, okay? He just, he just it, it jumped in my car. Like, the game warden going to believe that story? I don't think so. Anyway. Uh, the time <laughs> uh, here, Kendall. 1.5 seconds. 1.5 seconds. And so 19 minus 30 gives us, Kendall? Uh, negative 11. Negative 11. We'll divide that by the 1.5. Now notice that's meters per second per second. So we divide it out, we end up getting? 7.33. With negative 7.3 repeating. And I'm going two sig figs. So we'll say negative 7.3. And then meters per second squared. How many have the negative 7.3 meters per second squared? Remember the negative. Excellent. We got the meters per second squared as well. Questions on that? All right. And Audrey, read our next one. Audrey is sitting at a red light on a veteran's parkway, impatiently waiting for the start of the race. The light turns green at 3.1 seconds later. The car is going 21 meters per second. Find Audrey's acceleration. Now, for the record, green light does not mean start of race. It means you may now proceed cautiously without endangering others. But anyway, Audrey doesn't understand that. So at least now, this is a different Audrey, maybe. She just happens to live in Columbus. Anyway, all right, so uh, we're finding acceleration again, so we don't need to rework the equation. We just plug in the values. Final velocity. 
Good, at least as far as this particular problem is concerned. And then the initial velocity was, because you were sitting at the red light, right? So since you're sitting at the red light, that's zero. We really can kind of just ignore it, or we could write in zero meters per second, but obviously this is going to be 21. And the time, of course, took 3.1 seconds to get up to that rate of speed. So what did you get for your acceleration? Good, rounded 6.8 meters per second squared, which is pretty rapid acceleration there. Um, not as impressive as Kendall's deceleration of jamming on the brakes to avoid hitting Bambi, but still some pretty rapid acceleration there. All right, question, and we have this for number three. Now, any questions on velocity or acceleration? Question All right, uh, maybe uh, set that aside for, for now. Turn to page 93, if you would, please. Turn to page 93. Let's take a look at a couple more problems I wanted to get to yesterday, and we just ran out of time. page 93, and uh, go ahead and read problem number six for us, if you would, Michael. I find the uniform acceleration of 2.2 meters per second squared. If the initial velocity is 5 uh, meters per second, how much time is necessary for a velocity of 12 meters per second? All right, so as we look at what they give us here, uh, it tells us the acceleration. So I know that the A would be, Michael, no, 2.2 2 meters. And then it says um, the initial velocity. Okay, so obviously that's the uh, 5 meters per second. And um, says how much time is necessary for a velocity of 12 meters per second. What is the 12 meters per second, class? Yeah. That's the final velocity, the V sub F. And the question says, um, how much time is necessary? So obviously, class, we're solving for t. All right, so the only equation we've got so far that has these four variables is our acceleration equation. But again, we're solving this time for the time. So what am I going to need to do to solve? Alternate at your seats. Go ahead and solve this problem. How much time is it going to take at that acceleration rate to go from 5 to 12 meters per second? And Michael, what you got? 3.2 seconds. Good, 3.181818. It's rounded 3.2, and you said? Seconds. Seconds. All right, we also get 3.2 seconds. Good, look at number seven. And I'll read this one for us, Kendall. Okay, 5 sine 0 at 6.7 meters per second. Now let's start this jump down the line. If we accelerate down the slope at a uniform rate of 2.3 meters per second squared, what is, the, what it, what is its final velocity at the end? All right, any of y'all watch the Winter Olympics? All right, so you know what bobsled is? Okay, Jamaican bobsled team movie? You've seen that? Cool runners, whatever they call it. Okay, so we, we know what bobsled is, right? And, uh, and so, you know, everybody gets off to the side. They, they give it a, a running start, and they all jump in. Okay, so it's already moving at 6.7 meters per second because these Jamaicans are really, really fast. It's like a really strong, fast twitch fibers, just like the guy thought would happen. And, uh, and they, they get it moving, and it's already moving at 6.7 meters per second. Well, what would that be, Kendall? Um, the acceleration. Oh, 6.7 meters per second? No, that's the initial velocity. That's the initial velocity. And, um, and then it's going down the slope at 2.3 meters per second squared. That's our... That's the acceleration. That's the acceleration. And uh, it's going down the slope, and after 10 seconds, well, obviously, Kendall, that's time, 10 point seconds. The question is, how fast is it going right then? In other words, what is the... Now, we don't know that that's necessarily final as in the end of the trip, but just final for that portion that, of the trip that we're concerned with. What equation has these four variables in it, Audrey? There's only two so far. Yeah. There we go, the acceleration equation equals v sub f minus v sub i over t. But we're not going to solve for acceleration. It's like last time we did, and this time we're solving for the v sub f. So to get the v sub f by itself, Kendall, what do we need to do? E multiplies v, and then you add the v sub i. 
There we go. So we're going to find the product of the A and T and then add that product to the B sub I. We can probably do this in our heads without a calculator, right? What is 10 times 2.3? 23. 23. Add that to 23 to 6.7. 29.7, but round it off to for sig figs. 30 point and velocity measured in. And there we go. Careful. Acceleration meters per second squared velocity, just meters per second. I have questions on that. Questions on either of those two equations? Go and clear dust, if you would, please, except for a clean sheet of paper and a pencil. Clean sheet of paper and a pencil and everything else away. First last name at the top of your paper, along with today's date, which is 927-22. Uh, 927-22, today's date. 927-22. Today's date, this is quiz seven. Quiz seven. We'll end the video here once we go through the directions and we'll resume after the quiz. Um, let's go and take a look at the quiz together. Uh, yes, yes, sorry. Sorry, did I say just a sheet of paper and a pencil? Yeah. Program from last hour, eighth graders aren't allowed to use calculators. Yes, you may have your calculator out for sure. All right, you don't need it. What am I talking about? All right, numbers one through five, completion, write the term that best answers each statement or completes each statement. Six through nine, follow directions. Um, number eight is a little oddly worded there, um, unless I happen to fix it before Gavin takes the class. Um, but number eight, there's the extra word for that makes absolutely no sense. Let me just cross that out. <laughs> All right, uh, but otherwise, you know, find, follow the directions there. Uh, notice number six, there's actually two different ways you could define it. I'll take either definition. Okay, so if you're like, well, I could do it two ways. Just give me one of them. I'm not picky which one. And then numbers 10 and 11, you got some problem solving. Be sure to write the formula, show your work on that. All right, you may begin.